Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with another detailed update on Tropical Storm Philippe that is now a possible threat to the northern Leeward Islands in the next five days. While we're also keeping an eye on Invest 91L that is to the southeast of Philippe, this is also going to pose a interesting concern. And there's a lot of variable in the models on where these two systems could be headed over the next five days to seven days. Looking at the Central Atlantic wide satellite imagery provided by tropicaltidbits.com on our true color imagery, and we can clearly see where Philippe actually is. It's a little bit more better organized than it was yesterday, but still lots of shear and dry air really encroaching on the system. In fact, you could literally see where the shear is impacting on the system. You can see the surface low that is off towards the west where we have a lot of this deep convection that is located towards the eastern side of the circulation. So the vortex is not vertically aligned and it is uh, pretty tilted in such a way that we are getting burstiness to the convection. We also have another system that we're watching a little closely. That's 91L and that's while not going to pose an an immediate threat to the northern leeward islands there's a lot of wiggle room here on how these two systems will likely evolve so looking at the um closer zoomed in view satellite imagery this is a meso sector from dr levi cowan's site and if we look closely we can see some of these bursts of thunderstorms some of these feathery white cirrus elements they're actually blowing in out of this direction and that's the shear that Philippe is actually encroaching on it. It's, it's being impacted by that shear where we'll have a lot of the deep convection that is blowing up. You can see some of that uh, very explosive boiling, uh, pot of boiling water convection. Now it's what I call it. And that's really well um, offset from where the circulation might be. And if we could best estimate that the circulation is probably right over here where we have winds doing this all the way around, where we have southwesterly on the southern side, and we have winds that are wrapping around on the northeastern side. So while there is tropical storm force winds, it's most likely occurring under that deep convection today. So looking at the latest NHC forecast, this is the latest track uh, from their prediction, and winds are now at 50 miles an hour. It is moving off towards the west-northwest at 5 miles an hour, so it is just barely moving right now. It's drifting, and this is going to continue for the next several days. We don't expect this to really move very quickly uh, over a five-day period. And this is the uh, five o'clock advisory where we do have, again, those tropical storm force winds that are mainly on the eastern side. Now, another thing to point out that you'll see on most of the models is that there is going to be this track generally westward. We've seen that happen most of the uh, day today and yesterday. Now, this does not mean that I would really be extremely concerned if you are on these islands. Now, there's going to be a lot of heavy rainfall, and I'll show you here on the GFS and the European model that there's going to be some impacts but we're not talking about a major hurricane, nor are we talking about a hurricane at all, because there's going to be a lot of shear and dry air that is going to get in the way of the system over the entire forecast period that will prevent any further strengthening with Philippe as of what it stands right now. So yes, there's going to be a movement here to the west, and you'll see that on all the models today, but that does not mean it's going to become a big threat versus Lee. If Lee did the same thing, we would be in trouble if you were in if you're on Puerto Rico. But in this case, um, Philippe is going to be weakening as it moves westward. So the most rival time of tropical storm force winds is between 5 and 10%. So if you're on the northern leeward islands like the Virgin Islands, the British uh, or the U.S. Virgin Islands, I should say, if you're even on Guadalupe and even Puerto Rico, you have a slim chance of seeing tropical storm force winds. Again, this system is going to be weakening as it moves further west, and that's what most of the guidance does indicate. This is going to, tropical storm force winds, if they do happen, they could arrive as early as 8 p.m. on Saturday, uh, maybe even 8 in the morning across these islands of the northern leewards in that time frame. 
So now looking at the GFS model, this is the 850 millibar vorticity map and the color shading that you see is our spin, how much rotation there is uh, where we can see that vortex. And so the 850 millibar level is at 5,000 feet. So we have a ridge that is to the northeast of the system. Now, if Philippe was a lot deeper, the vortex was more aligned, right? And it's able to um, feel the southeasterly steering flow then Philippe would actually be already headed north right now, right? Because if we look at the steering flow at 500 millibars, we can see that uh, the ridge is over here. So the, the system would likely be feeling this southeasterly flow uh, aloft. But since our vortex is a lot shallower than what most models uh, predicted, we're going to see a system that now drifts more westward. And usually systems tend to do that. They drift westward when they're shallower because they're feeling the weaker trade wind flow. And you can see these barbs here. See, this is all trade wind flow in the low levels because we have that ridge that extends uh, at 5,000 feet to the north of the system. And so that's going to complicate the forecast. Should Philippe get deeper, it's going to be moving north. Versus if it stays shallower, it's going to be able to bend off towards the west. We're also going to see an interesting maybe Fujiwara effect. We have a system right here. This is 91L. Depending on, too, how strong this gets, if this is able to go northwest, that could actually sh uh, shove or um, basically kind of shunt um, Philippe a little further to the southwest briefly before resuming that westerly track. And that's why the NHC's uh, track forecast, the cone of uncertainty, is pretty fat at days four and five. So going forward now on how this is going to all um, evolve, uh, this is four, uh, two days out. This is Friday morning, and we can see there is Philippe there. Here is 91L. We're actually going to combine this video into two systems since that way it's not going to be a too terribly long video. And so here's Philippe. It's moving west while, again, we have this system going to do this. So maybe a bit of a Fujiwara effect that might happen, and the GFS actually uh, periodically stalls this system out, actually. So this could be a very interesting scenario where the GFS has a stalled out system and then eventually goes north because, again, our vortex is going to get deeper. That's what the GFS assumes that it's going to strengthen very quickly. And so when it strengthens, the vortex gets better aligned and it's able to feel the upper level steering flow. So instead of it going this way and strengthening, it's actually going to go this way and strengthen. So you can see that northerly jog uh, best noted on the GFS. And the reason why that happens is because now that we have um, we have our disturbance, we have one disturbance here, we have another disturbance here. And so this is actually going to create a weakness in the low-level um, ridge that is at 5,000 feet. So we have this uh, ridge that is off to the northeast, and the system is able to go north like that. Now, if we look at the um, the upper level steering flow really quickly, we can see this is also evolving pretty um, nicely um, versus a steering flow at the surface is we have this trough too that is going to be over Bermuda. We have a ridge that is shaped like so, like this. And so the system is able to escape if it gets deeper versus if it's shallower, it's going to just drift westward and really won't do much in the way of significant impacts. Now, there will be impacts, maybe some surf, maybe some wind and some showers, but nothing that would cause evacuations. We're not talking a Cat 5 or a Cat 4 situation here. We're talking about a weak system on approach to the Leeward Islands. So looking at the 500 or the deep layer moisture plot in the shading here is a lot of moisture in green. The browner colors are drier air. So when we go uh, play this uh, forward, we can see, and this is kind of acting a little finicky today. So we have a very fragile situation here. Uh, uh, Philippe kind of weakens because, again, we have a lot of dry air and shear that continues to impact the system. While we have 91L over here that is more dug deeper into the moisture um, field, this pocket of moisture that is kind of left behind from Philippe. Uh, and that's going to really complicate things because now... Uh, as we go forward in three days, 91L tries to get better organized, right? But then two, there's going to be some shear that's going to start encroaching on the system. While now we have Philippe here 
further west that might actually, with this outflow, um, whatever system we have, actually might be able to deflect some of that shear away from Philippe. So now, instead of the shear going like this towards Philippe, it actually might be able to get deflected a little bit because then we're going to have a trough that sets up here and that might allow Philippe to better organize. Now again, as I told you all, this is a very fragile situation in such a way that if you just look at the last model run from last night, we had a system, uh, Philippe maybe over here, uh, approaching the islands versus 91L up here to the northeast. If we go back to just a previous run, it was even further west, the, uh, Philippe was. And so we are now starting to see this weird correction. Actually, the 18Z is out right now. And this is actually deeper now. So we have had more corrections actually further to the east with Philippe. So it's going to be interesting to see with what all happens here. Once, if we do get a system that's able to develop, it's going to be very big and actually rare to see a system actually bend, go backward like this. So move forward for a little bit and then rotate back around and actually head east this low in latitude we're talking folks 20 degrees north latitude we don't see that very often and these systems kind of bend back this low in latitude so there'd be something worth watching how close does this get to the leeward islands and it remains very very uncertain extremely in such a way that we really just don't know where Philippe is going to go versus where 91L is going to be. Fujiwara effect, it is tough enough to actually forecast where Philippe is going. It's a whole different scale ball game when we have two systems that could have binary interactions with each other. Looking at the European model for today, this is probably a go-to scenario. And in other words, like probably a more better outcome, a more realistic one versus the GFS model. But we can also cannot strenuate off of the Euro 2 that this one could be also a possible outcome. But it does show that, well, the Euro doesn't even show that Philippe will even exist here in 54 hours, which probably seems to be a little bit more an understatement given the vortex that we have that's still hanging on to its time fighting the shear. And we have 91L that is further off to the west or further to the east, that is. And when we look at the Euro now, it doesn't do much either with 91L. So it's going to be interesting to see which model is more correct, though. There's a huge uncertainty between the GFS as well as the Euro deterministic models. All right, we're going to skip that. This is the vorticity mat uh, thing. We kind of showed you that with the GFS. It's not really much different versus with what we uh, showed you. So now the question here is how strong will Philippe get? And a lot of questions are probably going to be in the comments section of that. Does Philippe get very strong? Does it remain very weak? Well, when we look at the guidance, all I can say to you all is I don't know. I don't know how strong this is going to get. And what I mean by that is we got models that show this weakening completely. In fact, some of the models do not even ind indicate that this is going to even be a tropical storm in three days. Versus if we go straight up, we have some models that indicate that this could be a hurricane. And if that's not extreme enough, we got models all the way down here showing a tropical depression with some of the agreement showing a category four hurricane. So there is a huge spread here. This has an exceptionally high ceiling. And it is really, it's going to be to be announced on how strong this gets. Therefore, my intensity forecast is pretty much straightforward. And right now, I am really, uh, I'm really on edge on if that's going to even happen, on if this is going to strengthen. So I am really down the middle here. And I'm showing this probably maintain, maintaining its intensity with winds that are between 40 and 50 miles an hour throughout the next five days. While the other a bit of the model guidance indicates maybe a hurricane here. Um, so it's going to be um, something to watch in days to come. Now, where is Tropical Storm Philippe going? Wow, we have one for the wild card scenario here. And Butterdog and some of you that are in the Discord server watching me make this video, actually, probably 
laughing at these models right here because they are just going ballistic. They're really wild. Some of them want to go this way. Some of them do it this, and then they go and curve it out. I mean, we have some really weird spaghetti plots here. I um, mean, therefore, the cone of uncertainty, in my opinion here, is something pretty much like this. Really wide cone of uncertainty. And therefore, there is very little in the way of how strong this is going to get and where it's going to head. A cool thing that the GEFS actually shows this is the 18Z model run in, or the 12Z uh, ensemble forecast. And you can see that stronger system wants to bend off to the north. That's a given. That's what we've seen in recent model runs versus if it's a weaker system, it's actually going to bend off towards the west. And yeah, some of these do get on to Puerto Rico as well as even the Northern Dominican Republic. And therefore, um, uh, intensity is going to matter a lot. If it strengthens, then it's going to go north. If it's weaker, it's going to drift westward and might bring some inclement weather to some of the leeward islands. Well, everyone, before I do in this, I want to show you something really cool. Well, I want to present you all my DJI or DJI Mavic 3 or Mavic Air 3, that is. Models confuse me a lot. And so this is the drone that I have received in Yes Fire Ant. If you're watching this video, don't worry. I have registered the aircraft. So no need to panic at all. It's right here if you're just wondering. So yes, I got my drone and I am excited for you all as members only to provide you some of the most awesome photography with this drone. Right, buddy? Yeah, you're excited. You're on camera. Yeah, by the way, this is Butter Dog over here. Gave him an awesome name, and yeah, he's excited to take the skies. Well, anyways, if you did enjoy today's video, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you are a member already, you're going to get some awesome drone footage of the weather, sunsets, and cool, awesome sky photography, as well as if you're not a member already, please consider becoming a member right now on the YouTube channel. There will be a link in the description below this video to sign up today. It is not free. This is a paid side of things on YouTube of the work that I do. So if you want to become a member, um, get started today with the link in the description below this video. But that's going to do with today's Tropical Weather Outlook and Discussion. Share, like, and subscribe, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.